Peace and blessings, peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger, we're back in another video. This one's going to be about seven signs God is calling you to ministry. It could also be a sign that you're watching this video right now. But I'm going to be going over my experiences when before I even knew God was calling me. And um, I'm going to be sharing all this stuff. Like, I'm like the last person who should have been doing all these videos. I'm the last person. I think that's what I believe. Because before God called me, I was on my way to hell, straight up. My lifestyle that I was living... And see, that's the type of people who God chooses to do. Not not just them, of course, but the Bible says, I'll leave a verse right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 26, 27, 28. It says that God chooses and calls the fools of this earth to, to confound the wise. So he always chooses people that you would never expect. And I was one of them. I'm living proof of that verse right here. Okay, I'm living proof. He always chooses the people you would never expect. Uh, the, the Pharisees, the overly religious, the overly zealous type you notice it's never really them it's always the one who you will never expect okay so let's get it let's go i want to start this, ver this uh, video off with the scripture okay this is in romans chapter 10 verse 14 15 it says how then shall they call on him and whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him who have not, they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Okay, next one up is uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 15 says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. All right, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature, man. Let's get it. Let's go, man. The first one, the first sign when God's calling you into a ministry. Okay, he will use other leaders, other high ranking members of the body in Christ to tell you. Okay, um, back in 2016, 15, before I even knew anything about like spiritual stuff about the Bible, I went to a church in Oakland. I'll never forget this day. And it was my mom's African. So they were playing uh, like a, a Tigrinya. The language is Tigrinya. That's the language they were speaking. And I don't know that language. I don't know how to speak uh, that language. And it was like a six hour long service. I was so bored. I wanted to leave. And like towards the end, um, <clears throat> the pastors or prophets were like prophesying people's lives. And one of them put their hand on my face and um, he put oil on me. He was like, he said in that language that, you know, he, he's going to be a prophet. That's what he told my mom. Uh, my mom watches my video. So go ahead and leave it in the comments. Let it be known. And I didn't know what a prophet was at the time. I had no idea what any of the stuff he was saying. He's like, oh, he has, a, he has an icon. And I, that seed planted in my mind because I was like, wait, what is he? Cause, and also through those men who, who were like the leaders of that church, like, you could tell they had the Holy Spirit. You could, they, they, those dudes were fired up. I've never seen someone that fired up in person, in person before. Like those dudes, they, they were about what they really were about. So yeah, shout out to them. So God will use other leaders. Okay. It's all ranks to God's kingdom. Okay. Just like how in the military, they have general sergeants, um, you know, all those type of ranks. It's the same thing in the kingdom of God. It's also the same thing with the kingdom of Satan. Satan has his high ranking demons, his high ranking minions. God has his high-ranking uh, warriors, warriors for Christ, okay? Number two is you are willing to serve others first, okay? You have a desire to help other people, okay? Even before I, I was, uh, what God called me to do what I'm doing, I would always send people Bible verses, even though I didn't even understand the Bible verses. I was leaving people, I was texting. I, there was a time where my friends like, Mark, start, stop texting me. Like, for real, they were like, stop texting me Bible verses. And I didn't even know the Bible verse. I just, it was like, it resonated with me. And I'll be using like the NIT, the New King James Version. I didn't know nothing, but I would always be sharing the gospel before I even knew. Like that, that's crazy. And I remember I, I would have a lot of friends like, or just ignore me. Or one of them straight out just told me, hey, Mark, stop sending me. Stop sending me. <laughs> he just said, stop sending me, stop sending me uh, these Bible verses. And I respect it, you know, so... And when you're willing to serve other people, it must come with sacrifice. It must come with great discipline. To be a disciple of Christ, it comes with sacrificing, you know, denying yourself, picking up your cross. It also comes with sacrificing, okay? Willing to give up your own selfish desires to do what God wants to do, to do God's will in your life and to help other people. So once God sees that in your heart, because remember, God tries our hearts. He knows your heart. Once God sees that you really, you don't have a hidden agenda or hidden motive why you're doing that. You're not doing it for clout. You're not doing it to be seen. You truly, genuinely want to help people. God's going to see that and he's going to promote you because God always exalts the humble and he brings down those who exalt themselves. Okay, number three is you have a strong desire to live for God. And when you have a strong desire to live for God, 
you know, to do, to be obedient, you're going to have the love. You're going to love Jesus, bro. You're going to love the son. And the reason why you're going to love him so much is because what he di did when he died, you know, and you know that we are, we are all in our fallen nature and we all fall short, but because of his blood, we have grace. So you're going to have a different type of love for Jesus. And when you have a different type of love for Jesus, the more the light is going to shine in you. Okay. When you have the spirit of Christ in you, you're just going to shine bright. You're going to be able to forgive other people, no matter how much evil they did to you, it won't matter. You're going to be able to forgive other people because you understand that God forgave you first. So you're going to have a true, when you have a true desire to help people, your spirit changes, your heart changes. It even says this in Ezekiel chapter 36 to 26, that God will give you a new spirit and, and, and he will take out the, um, the thorny, the stony heart and give you um, a new one. Okay, I'll leave that verse on the screen right here. And that's true. You know, before uh, God put me in the position where I'm in, in life, my spirit was vexed. Uh, my spirit was just full of unclean spirits, you know, um, plagued with, you know, generational curses, plagued with demons to, to the doors that I was opening through my disobedience. I mean, just plagued. Okay. And, you know, God gave me a new spirit, the Holy Spirit. And I, since I love Jesus so much, when you love Jesus, you're going to love to help people because what did Jesus do? The same thing. So you're going to want to be like him. You're going to not, not to say that you're not going to be without sin, but you're going to strive to become like Jesus. Okay. Number four is God will isolate you to prepare you. I have many videos on isolation and those videos that I made on, you know, why God isolates his chosen ones, those videos hit deep because I really went through that, you know, and when God was isolating me, it was to pre prepare me. Where's my marker at? When God was isolating me, it was all to prepare you, okay, all to prepare me. And when it's preparing you, you're cutting off all distractions. God's going to be exposing certain people. Okay, that are in their life, who are snakes, who are devils, tares, uh, who who have bad intentions for you that you weren't able to see before because you didn't have the Holy Spirit before. You didn't have discernment. So you weren't, you weren't able to tell who's real and who's fake. And see, when God's isolating you, it's like he's, he's blessing you with spiritual gifts and you have no idea. You start to see the world differently. And once you start to see the world differently, you are now going to be called crazy and weird by those same people who you used to be friends with. Those same people who you used to party with, get high with, do all those type of stuff with, right? Those same people are going to be at, in a spiritual warfare against you. So God has to isolate you to get you, to give you wisdom, to give you knowledge. Because remember, the Bible says that he who isolates himself gains wisdom. Something like that in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1 and 2. Okay, so... Isolation is actually better in your spirit. You're gaining more knowledge, more wisdom. Even the guy, um, John, when he wrote uh, all those books in the Bible, I think it was three or four. He wrote multiple books in the Bible and he was isolated. He was in prison. Okay, so he was doing a lot in isolation. And not to say that you got to be isolated to do God's work. Not, I don't get the wrong message, but best believe through, for my testimony, when I was isolated, it was just my spirit getting renewed. Uh, I was learning a lot more. I spent was sp spending more time with God, no longer getting distraction, distracted. Uh, the temptations, you know, now we all get tempted, but it, it, you get tempted less because the evil communication corrupt good manner. So you're running around the certain people, the wrong people, they're going to tempt you. They're going to lead you to darkness without them even knowing because Satan's going to use them. And Satan doesn't want you to call, to be called to your, min to your ministry, to save souls, to help people. You want to know why? Because he wants them to go to, he wants as many people to go to hell. He doesn't, he doesn't want God to use you. Of course, and that's a threat. <laughs> that's just, that's just dangerous, bro. For, for you to be used by God to, to spread the word, that's a threat. That's dangerous to saying. So best believe, the Bible even says, be not many masters for we shall receive the greater condemnation. Okay, so when you're, when God calls you to a ministry, light, your life changes, but you got to trust the plan. And best believe that you will be rewarded for your labor. Okay, he who sows righteousness shall shall reap a sure reward. That's in Proverbs. Okay, so yes, we're to go through the most in life. We're to go through the most spiritual warfare in life because Satan sees that we're helping people, we're leading people to Christ, we're leading people into that light, the truth, the truth of the gospel. And say, that's just that's just dangerous to Satan. That's dangerous to those demons. It's just dangerous. So because that, you're gonna get attacked by demons more. Okay, you're going to be attacked by Satan and they're going to try to send agents your way. Oh, I know how it works. <laughs> but touch my not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Number five is you have a humble spirit. 
We all know what the Bible says over and over that God is with the lowly, but he resists the proud. Okay, He resists the arrogant. The Pharisees, the people who thought that they were the closest to God, the people who knew all the law, they knew all the verses it seemed like. Okay, They were so holy and righteous outside, but inside spiritually, they were full of uncleanness and dead man's bones. Okay, That means they had... They were spiritually dead. Okay, they were carnal men, and so when when you have a humble spirit, God can work with you. Not to say that God, because God can use anybody, obviously, but when it comes to ministry, when it comes to be on fire, you have to be humble. Because if you're not humble, you know God will humble you. God will humble you. Look at what happened to Paul. We all know what happened to Paul. What he was doing, and God chastised him. Okay, he became blind for three days. A snake bit him. He was going through the most. And see, the Bible says that despise not the chastening of the Lord. For whom the Lord chastises, he loves. So in the midst of Paul going through that, it just showed God's great love upon him and his grace and mercy upon him. And look what Paul did. He wrote most of the New Testament. Okay, so always keep that in mind. And yeah, so yeah, number six is the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Okay, this is in Acts chapter one, verse eight. It says, or yeah, Acts chapter one, verse eight, it says that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive great, great power. Okay, you're going to have the power to minister to other people. You're going to have the power to be bold. You're no longer going to be anxiety or fear what other people think about you. You're going to have a strong confidence because the Bible says that through the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 27. So you're going to have a strong confidence when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You're not going to be afraid anywhere you go, anywhere you go, because you know that the Lord is with you. You're, you've been anointed, which is number seven. Okay, you're, You've been anointed and it means you've been favored. You've been favored from God. And you've, because you're anointed, you can now do everything that God wants you to do. And there's no excuses because God gives that certain spirit on you. Okay. Even though you have the haters, you have the agents, you have the naysayers. We're not worried about them because, hey, Jesus had to, uh, had to deal with those agents, those haters. And the more God raises you up, the more there's going to be demons that bring you back down. So these are the seven signs God is calling you into a ministry. Number one is God uses other leaders to tell you through confirmation. Number two is, and this video could be confirmation. <laughs> so yeah, number two is you are willing to serve others first, to help people, to sacrifice. Number three is you have a strong desire to live for God. You love Jesus. Number four is God will isolate you to prepare you. Number five is that you have a humble spirit. Number six is the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Number seven is an anointed and favored. So I hope you guys got edified from this video. If you made it this far, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you guys wish to share it on all social media platforms. I love you guys so much. This is Mark the Messenger. I'm out. Peace.